The main challenges are that there's the current economic financial crisis which will continue for a while and there is no guarantee that there will not be a repeat unless we reform financial systems. The second set of problems are social, they are associated with particularly persistent poverty, more than two billion poor people and growing. And the third set of issues are environmental, of which climate change is one of the more prominent ones. We have many other problems of water, food, land, degradation, air pollution and so on. So environment is the third element. One of the key points is that these problems are synergistic. If we look at them piecemeal, then we are bound to fail and they look very formidable. But if you look at some of the underlying issues, for example, the population growth, the high levels of consumption, the technologies and the governance structures, then you can, by shaping policies that influence those drivers, you can address all of the other problems that I mentioned at the same time. So there is room for optimism in the sense that you try to have an integrated set of solutions which address all of the pro problems on a broader front. Well, uh, I'll give you one example of how not to do it and that is the issue of corn ethanol which was promoted as a solution to the oil crisis. And in 2008, the promotion, the use of corn for ethanol production actually led to a food crisis in certain countries where there were droughts. So when you have that kind of piecemeal solution, you have problems. But if your, say, integrated solution might be, for example, growing more trees. Growing more trees will first reduce the amount of carbon. It sucks up the carbon. It's very good for the environment because it protects watersheds and does other things. It provides jobs. It provides timber, it's good for the economy, and it has a social benefit of poverty reduction as well. So with a simple act of growing more trees, you're addressing a whole range of problems. And there are solutions which provide multiple uh, benefits, which we can find, which exist. I'm not too optimistic, simply because of recent political events. Uh, including the recent midterm election in the, in the United States because the United States is a major player and we need action uh, in order to move forward on a broad front. But I think in the longer term what is going to happen is that the problems of climate change become uh, emerge, uh, for example, uh, more extreme events and other things and people start to move. The, the key issue is can we get those changes fast enough to stave off the, the uh, uh, really serious climate problems? Uh, the current thinking is that two degrees Celsius is the dangerous limit that we should avoid. But in order to do that, we have to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 2020 and that is just 10 years from now. And that is a great challenge. My own thinking is that I think unless you have a, a broad consensus within a, a kind of a UN framework, it's not going to be a sustainable solution. I agree that bilateral or multilateral or even voluntary commitments is a way to get the ball rolling. For example, the commitment that China made in Copenhagen uh, and so on. Uh, because it sort of gives industry a signal that some governments at least are moving in that direction so that then they start making the investments and so on towards low carbon technologies. So to get moving, yes, bilateral, multilateral, whatever we can get, but in the long run, I think you do need all countries to sign on uh, in order to, to, to cement the deal. Together. But that's not going to happen. Let, that will not real. happen in the short run, but we have to work towards it.